Um, I very much welcome the new political guidance that's been put out um, to schools. Uh, I completely agree we should let children be children. We shouldn't be pushing adult political agendas in schools. Very, very important. And in the guidance, I think there are 19 worked examples to help teachers navigate you know, some quite tricky issues, which is great. You know, racism, uh, different political systems, environmentalism, these kind of issues that do come up in schools. But what's conspicuous by its absence in those scenarios is any mention of the teaching of gender ideology, uh, by which I mean schools teaching against guidance that there are more than two sexes, that you can change sex, that if you are gender non-conforming, it might mean that you are the opposite sex uh, to what you are bio uh, biologically. And I think this is particularly worrying in the context of the interim CAS report, CAS review that came out last week, which obviously was for, you know, primarily about the gender identity services for children in a health context, but also does mention the fact that socially transitioning a child, as in allow changing their use of pronouns, changing their names, isn't a neutral act mm. uh, and does have serious consequences further down the line. Now, I know anecdotally from parents that are writing to me, schools in my local area, um, you know, the, the, from what I'm hearing anecdotally, that schools are transitioning pupils against their parents, without their parents' knowledge. Uh, they are pumping this view that, you know, you can change sex, that you might be a different sex, when, when often these children are gay and lesbian, they're autistic, uh, that vulnerable children are over overrepresented. And I think we've got a serious issue here, but we've only, we haven't even scratched the surface. So I suppose my question is, is twofold. Will... Can we update the guidance to include how teachers should navigate this very difficult issue of gender ideology? Uh, and secondly, how can the department investigate what really is happening in schools? Because at the moment, a lot of these reports are obviously anonymous, yeah. um, and it's a very, very difficult area to navigate. But it's a huge safeguarding issue because of the kinds of children uh, that are being let down. So, so, I mean, the first thing I'd say is that schools should not be teaching ideology, yeah. regardless of in what space that is. And I think we're pretty clear about that in the political impartiality guidance. This they really, are, the, and that's the, why the, the schools, 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 schools should be teaching facts and, yeah. and, 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 and information. In, in, in that respect. Um, as you've said, quite a lot of the allegations, suggestions here are anecdotal. It, it, it's important to get to the bottom of each individual issue. We want schools to be able to support pupils, including the small number of pupils who, who may have gender identity issues and may need support in that respect. And it's important that if they approach members of staff, they can be signposted to the right advice and support, which won't always be people in their school, uh, by the way. I think it's important to, to, to reflect on that. But we also need to make sure that um, issues around sex and gender and identity are taught in an age-appropriate way listening to the concerns of, of, of parents, and that's one of the um, responsibilities we set out in our guidance around RSHE, uh, so that schools engage with that. But I recognise that there are some really complex legal issues to do with the Equalities Act in this space, and, and uh, also I, 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 I know that there are um, concerns about protecting, for instance, single-spec spaces in some, uh, some schools and that, that area. So we are doing a piece of work with the Equalities and Human Rights Commission to look into this space to see if we can provide any further guidance uh, and, and support support um, in this area. Um, that will take some time because these are not straightforward and, yeah. and simple things, but I think it's important that we, we balance the responsibility to protect to protected characteristics of sex um, with the protected characteristic um, of gender reassignment, which is also uh, protected under the Equality Act, a and we make sure that we address um, the concerns that parents may have in this space. Now, there have been some examples, um, I think, where, where parents have had concerns, those have been raised, and, and actually uh, where Ofsted has stepped in from a, a safeguarding perspective or, a, or, 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 or an improvement perspective. So I think it's important that we, that, that we look at those and take the evidence from those. I think with regard to the political impartiality guidance, I, I think it's very clear that what we are setting out is that there should never be an attempt to indoctrinate to impose a particular view uh, on children, um, but equally that we do have to respect... Um, protected characteristics under the Equality Act. And, 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 and that's the difficult area that schools are trying to navigate. I think we should be doing more as a department to support them in that, and, yeah. and I'm very keen that we do that. I think that's why the Secretary of State undertaking to do this work with the Equalities and Human Rights Commission, I think, is an important step forward on that. Yeah, I appreciate that. But I think going back to the CAS review, the point is that this is, you know, in, in, in the medical space, this is the, the report so far, this is highly unregulated. There are some serious evidence and safeguarding questions. But often what's leading to children getting to these clinics is being told in schools, either by, you know, visitors or through the materials that are used in classrooms, um, that the answer to some of their, you know, important teenage struggles is to change sex. Uh, now, the, the DfE guidelines is very clear that you can't tell children that you can change sex 
or that if you're gender non-conforming, it might mean that you're a different sex. You know, that, that is against the guidance, and yet mm. it is happening. And for these other issues, because the, de the department knows it's happening, we've set out some very helpful worked examples to help teachers navigate those. Why can't we add to that a worked example of what you do when you come across this issue of gender identity? I've seen some of the videos mm. that are being used in schools, you know, where it shows a boy putting nail varnish on and the implication is perhaps you're actually a girl mm. or a girl weightlifting and saying well perhaps you're actually a boy now these are the kind of gender stereotypes yes. that we did away with in the 1980s yeah. but are being brought back by this ideology and it is an ideology there's no basis in science <laughs> so how are we going to get that in to these this guidance well as i say i i i, I think the political impartiality guidance is clear about not teaching ideology, not teaching a particular point of view. I think what you just said, the one thing I pick you up on is that you, you said you're not supposed to teach pupils that they can change sex. Of course you can do that because you are supposed to teach LGBT concepts. You uh, should not teach no, them no. that they should change no, sex. No, no, hang on. You can't, biologically talk. you cannot change sex. Okay, you are, you, you know, in every really? cell in your body mm. you have sex chromosomes. You cannot change them. But, you know, but that, that is a biological fact. Yeah. So you can tell ch children that some people believe yeah. that you, you know, you you could have a diff different gender to the sex you're born, but other people, and science says this, you can't teach it as fact, and that's very clear in the guidance. So, I th okay, I, sorry, I uh, made the mistake, which I shouldn't have done, of uh, uh, confusing sex with gender in that respect. But I think, I think the point that I would make is that we do need to talk about the world as it is. We need to talk about the fact that people do transition and that there are um, trans people, and we should support them as a protected group under yeah. the Equality Act. So we, 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 we're not going to rule out people teaching about that. What we should be doing, though, is making sure it's taught in an appropriate way um, and, and making sure that it, 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 it's not encouraging something which would be a medically difficult and um, uh, could, could have implications for people's mental health. Uh, and, and the balance we should strike there um, is about teaching the facts, teaching what we have set out in the RSHE um, cu cu curriculum, not teaching a particular ideology or a particular view. So I'm very clear on that. I, I think we have set out sufficient examples in the political impartiality guidance to be clear on that, but I'm happy to look at the CAS report yeah. and, and see if there's any further work that we can do. And as I say, I do think that there is room for better guidance to support schools in their safeguarding responsibilities in this respect and, and in understanding the Equalities Act. That's why we want to do this work with the EHRC yeah. uh, and that's why I think it's important that we press ahead with that.